Good morning. Well, I'm here with uh, Matthias, and we want to show you uh, another interesting case. This is a female patient, uh, 54 year old, risk factors, arterial hypertension. Clinical history, we have a PAOD Rutherford 3, walking capacity is around 150 meters, claudication at both calves. We performed the standing of the left subclavian artery last year, and the ABI at both legs is 0.8. Our procedural steps, we have an excess at the right groin with a 12 French sheath, and uh, we will perform a pre-dilatation after this implantation of an atinol stand and post-dilatation. In the angio, very nicely you can see this, uh, the target lesion here, it's uh, infrarenal high-grade aortic stenosis. Yeah, I think we can show you the angiogram which we've uh, obtained so far. Uh, I think you can see here this uh, lesion, that it's uh, actually quite calcified lesion, um, maybe not so much in the area of the highest uh, degree of the stenosis, but uh, somewhere uh, also pro uh, proximal to that. Uh, what we actually really want to show you here uh, are the IVUS images. We uh, want to obviously implant a self-expanding stand, so it's important uh, for us to use the IVUS actually for sizing uh, of the aorta. That's just the proximal part where the really tight area starts. Uh, proximal to that, we can see uh, a little bit of the calcification. And I think now when he pulls back very gently, here probably we see the really the narrowest point. You can see that it's almost uh, uh, the catheter is almost filling up the lumen, so it's really narrow. And that's, uh, that's just uh, immediately distal to the lesion. Uh, that's above the bifurcation. You can see here how close it is actually to the bifurcation, because here at uh, five o'clock, that's the um, that's the left common iliac artery, and at uh, 11 o'clock, the uh, where the catheter is, the right common iliac artery. We are going to implant a self-expanding stand, and we will show you in a minute that this hopefully will be uh, very appropriate to. Uh, place the stand close to the aortic bifurcation. So you can see here that distally to the lesion, uh, uh, in the area of the bifurcation, we have a, uh, it's, it's a, a little bit oval shape. Uh, uh, so probably the, uh, the, the more relevant diameter is actually the smaller one, which is 8.7, so roughly around nine millimeters uh, distal to the lesion, because the other axis is actually the axis where you already the separation into the two common iliac arteries starts. So if we can go back to the life, we will do another measurement proximal to the lesion. We have the impression that it's actually not a really a full circumferential calcification. So uh, we, we think that this lesion should be actually dilatable, but we will actually as a next step uh, do a pre-dilatation and see how the balloon opens. So now you can see here it's around um, 10 to 11 millimeters. Actually, we did another measurement offline where we came up with 12 millimeters. Um, however, uh, so uh, you can see that there's a certain diameter mismatch also between the proximal segment and the distal segment. And from that perspective, we believe that the plan here to implant the self-expanding stand is probably very appropriate because then you can deal in the easiest way with this mismatch. Moreover, I think the self-expanding stand has great advantages uh, if it comes to the placement close to the iliac bifurcation, because uh, if you would implant a balloon expandable stand, the bulging of the balloon ends, particularly of the uh, distal balloon end, uh, could cause dissections in the area of the bifurcations. So here you can see now the, uh, the stand arriving, which is uh, actually the Sinus XL stand from Optimate, one of the devices which I think are really made for those indications. And uh, so the challenge will now be 
to uh, place the stand covering the lesion and making sure that uh, a little back. So this would be actually optimal, I think. So I think what he has to watch is the really the the distal uh, end of the stand because we want to be just above the bifurcation, but obviously not in the right uh, common iliac. A little test. Yeah, I think the position is very nice. I hope it stays like this. Uh, Dirk, do you have any foreshortening uh, of this stand? Actually, not a lot. Yeah, I think he made it very made a very nice deployment here. I think we uh, we just do another dilatation with the aid that may be an unnecessary step, but the key here for all these procedures is obviously to always try to be on the safe side. We will probably be uh, uh, very cautiously uh, attempting uh, another post dilatation with very low pressure here with a short balloon to potentially get a better alignment here of the stand. That's actually a 10 millimeter balloon. Maybe we stay here just a little bit. Uh, in my opinion, the results look very good, and uh, I, I wouldn't uh, try to have a better result than you had already. Pratica. Yeah, you can see that's proximal. Nice. <laughs> in this area. In this area, it's very nice. Yeah, much bigger than before, but clearly still na more narrow than uh, the proximal reference, of course. But I think it's all about the functional gradient now. So we, let's uh, do a pressure measurement. So we have 170 over 69, mean 110. Okay, now just pull back. Okay. There's no difference. Uh, no gradient, There's right? No difference. Uh, that's what we wanted to achieve here, and uh, it's really uh, important to say. It's, I think it's really an important message to say at this point. Uh, there's absolutely no sense to go for more, more aggressive uh, post dilatations. The stand is well expanded, so um, probably the image will be okay. I'm convinced that we should stop here because the, um, this is a small lady. Uh, they do have small aortas. It's a typical place for having uh, this kind of very calcified stenosis. The result functionally seen will be okay. Thank, thank, thank you again for this uh, great demonstration uh, and uh, we will start now the presentation.